compound factor. So in basically in Malaysia, the electricity tariff is based on the active energy or real power. So it be being charged based on the measured real power in kilowatt hour and does not include any reactive power or KVARs. Okay, so in order to uh, recover extra cost incurred in uh, supplying the reactive energy required by the consumer, the utility imposes surcharge. So it will usually TMB will impose a surcharge on a customer whose power factor average lower than 0 0.85. So if we look at this, uh, figure we see that if our power factor is lower than 0 0.85 so we will be, we will be charged by the TMB okay so TMB will uh, fine us or we have to pay a penalty because our power factor is lower than 0 0.85 okay this is true for the medium and low voltage consumer okay for the high voltage consumer this power factor a bit higher so the high voltage consumer must maintain the power factor above 0 0.9 okay lower than 0 0.9 it will be a penalty by the TMB lah. okay so if higher than 0 0.85 it's no surcharge for the uh, medium and low voltage consumer for the high voltage consumer 0 0.9 so there's no charge so let's see this uh, power factor improvement. How to improve power factor? Okay. If you look at this uh, power triangle, we have this P. This P is P. P load. This is the power absorbed by the uh, by the load. Okay. So because of low power factor, this theta one, this theta one. Let's say this power factor now is 0 0.65. So PF1 equal to 0 0.65. So we will have this power factor angle, this theta 1 angle. Theta 1 angle will be 49.45 5 degree. So we will have this. Uh, triangle okay. so this triangle okay so now we have theta 1 of it the triangle we have s1 looks absorbed by the uh, s uh, apparent power absorbed by the loads we have this is reactive power need by the loads so we have theta 1 s1 and q1 so now we want to improve this power factor from 0 0.65 let's say we want to improve this power factor to power factor 2 is 0 0.995 uh, let's say 95 so if we want to improve the power factor at 0 0.95 we will get we will get theta 2 this one theta 2 let's say this theta 2 theta 2 will be 18.19 degree this is new triangle okay so we have the same p load power absorbed by the loads but now this load is working at 0 0.95 power factor because of 0 0.9 power factor we will have s2 over here this s2 S2 and then we have Q2 instead of Q1 this Q2 so based on this triangle we want to improve power factor from 0 0.65 to 0 0.95 so what we have to do so we have to install a capacitor bank this is the size of capacitor bank okay from Q1, this Q1, so we want to reduce this reactive power absorbed by the load by Q2, this Q2. So what we have to do, we have to install 
this much of capacitor band. Okay, this is capacitor band size. So we want to cut this reactive power. Okay, we want to install this much of reactive power. So how to calculate Q cap or Q capacitor? So Q cap equal to Q1 minus Q2. This is basic equation. If you remember this one, you can solve or you can find the capacitor band size. No matter what type of question you will face in the real life or in the final exam. Okay, so this is the basic Q cap equals to Q1 minus Q2. So what is Q1? And what is Q2? Let's say we have this much of power, we have power factor. From this power and power factor, we can find S1. We can find S1 and S2. Okay, based on this S1 and S2, we can find this Q1 and Q2. That's it. So the amount of reactive power compensation supplied by the capacitor bank. Uh, this is amount of uh, reactive power supplied by the capacitor bank. So we have to install this size of capacitor bank. This side. So what we have to do, we have to find Q1 and Q2. Reactive power 1 and reactive power 2. So how to find the reactive power 1? So to find reactive power 1, first we have to calculate apparent power. So, apparent power 1 is given by P load over power factor because we know that P equal to S cos theta. So, S equal to P over cos theta. Okay, so this P over cos theta. So, we can find S1 and then by using the same technique we also can find the apparent power supplied by the source after adding the capacitor band or S2 okay so by knowing S1 and S2 we can find Q1 and Q2 how to find Q1 so based on the power fed, power triangle we can find Q1 and Q2 we have this power triangle we have P, Q, S. So the relation between Q, P, and S is given by this equation. So Q1 is equal to square root of S1 square minus P load square. Okay. Same goes to Q2, reactive power 2 is equal to square root of S2 square minus P load square. This is P load. P load doesn't change. Okay, the change only occurs to the this theta power factor S1 and S and then Q1. Okay, and if this uh, power factor is theta 2, this S2, this Q2, P load doesn't change. Huh? Okay, so we get Q1 and Q2. So, so by replacing Q1 and Q2 in this equation just now we have this equation q cap equal to q1 minus q2 so by replacing q1 and q2 in this equation we will get this uh, equation uh, this is final equation we can derive this one okay. if you uh, try to solve this equation we will get this equation so now we know that Capacitor bank size can be calculated by using this equation. Okay. So this is capacitor bank size. This is load. This is power factor. Power factor one. This is the desired power factor. Let's say from zero point six five, we want to increase the power factor from zero point six five to zero point nine five. We just enter this value as pf1 this value as pf2 then we will get the capacitor size capacitor band size usually the steps of capacitor band size normally available in the market is the step of 50 kva okay
This is the size, 50 kVi. Okay, for example, example one, an industrial plant has an active power demand of 500 kilowatts at a power factor of 0 0.6, 0 0.76 lagging. Determine the reactive power ratings of the capacitor bank required to improve the power factor to the following power factor. Let's say from 0 0.76 to 0 0.8. So we know that we have this equation. Capacitor bank size is equal to P load times square root of 1 over PF1 square minus 1 minus the square root of 1 over PF2 square minus 1. So by entering the uh, PF1 value over here and then P load value. So now this power, active power demand is 500 kilowatt. This is P load. This is power factor 1. This is power factor 2. By entering this value into this equation, we will get this much of reactive power of capacitor bank size. 52.6 kilobar but we have to assume that capacitor bank size or capacitor bank steps available in the market is equal to 50 kvar kilobars okay so minimum 50 and then 100 kilobar 150 200 and so on so when we have this value 52.6 we have to round up these numbers towards the 50 kvr so that's why we have 50 kvr of capacitor bank size so if you want to increase power factor from 0 0.76 to 0 0.9 in case b we just put these uh, numbers into the equation spf1 ds this spf2 pf1 still the same 0 0.76 this PF2 0 0.9, then we will get 185.4 kilobar. So 185 kilobar is almost uh, approximate to 200 kilobar. So we choose 200 kilobar capacitor bank size. Okay. See unity power factor. Unity that means one power factor is equal to one. So we just put 0 0.76 as PF1, one as PF. 2 so we will get this much of power 427.6 kilobar so we approximate this value towards 400 kilobar okay so we round out this towards the 400 kilobar so this is the capacitor capacitor bank size that we have to install